What's up, YouTube? I am Darren the Bowtie Fragrance Guy on the channel. We talk about fashion and fragrance as well. We get into a little bit of lifestyle uh, content on the channel from time to time. But if you're interested in that kind of content, I hope you won't mind uh, hitting the subscribe button and hit the bell icon as well to ensure you get notified anytime I upload new content on the channel. On today's video, I'm going to be jumping into 10 masterpiece designer fragrances in my collection. Now, the thing about this list is going to be not all of these fragrances are actually you will find in my top 10 fragrances in my collection when you talk about designer fragrances, but I give props where props are due. Sometimes for you, when you look at the impact of fragrances had on fragrances uh, as a whole, uh, the way a fragrance was put together, how it develops, different things. There are different reasons that I put these 10 fragrances on a list like this to uh, be considered, in my humble opinion, a masterpiece of a designer fragrance. Now, I know that there may be others out there. Of course, your mileage may vary. So why don't you guys leave some of your uh, fragrances that are designers that you consider to be a masterpiece? That's what the comment section is for. So drop it down below, man. What are some fragrances that you consider to be a masterpiece that would fall under the category of a designer fragrance? I would love to see what you guys think as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the intro and when we come back, 10 masterpiece designer fragrances in my collection. If you wanna see what's on the list, you know the routine. Keep it locked right here. All right, guys, we are back. Thank you so much for keeping it locked in. Let's go ahead and jump into the list. And these are in no particular order. I consider all these to be masterpiece, um, a masterpiece of a designer fragrance. And the first one comes from the house of Chanel. And this one is called Chanel Ego East. Chanel Ego East, yeah, not Platinum Ego East, but Chanel Ego East. This to me is a masterpiece of a designer fragrance. It has a classic feel to it, but it has a modern twist to it as well. Again, one of the fragrances that I absolutely adore. It is great for the modern day gentleman. If you're a guy like myself that oftentimes you like to, or even if you just have to dress up, uh, at least like I'm dressed right now with a suit and at least a dress shirt. Uh, this kind of fragrance, this is the kind of fragrance you cannot go wrong with. There is some tobacco in this. Oh man, there is a uh, some kind of this vanillic feel to it. There's some carnation in here, so it gives a little floral uh, spiciness to the scent uh, as well. And the primary note that you're gonna get is sandalwood. At its core, this is a sandalwood-based fragrance, and it's phenomenal. This is a phenomenal fragrance. I kind of spelt like Trump on that. Phenomenal. This is China. No. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, but anyway, this is a, uh, to me, a masterfully done fragrance. And uh, again, to me, perfect 10 out of 10, easy uh, masterpiece right here from the house of Chanel. I think this was done in the early 90s, maybe actually 1990 by none other than Jacques Polsch. And um, knocked it out of the park with this fragrance, man. So the first fragrance up on my list today, when I talk about masterpieces and the designer realm of fragrances, you gotta talk about this fragrance. Not Chanel Ego East, Platinum Ego East, I'm sorry, but this is Chanel Ego East. All right, guys, so the next fragrance up on the list today that you know I definitely will put in that category of being a masterpiece is a fragrance from Mason Margiela, and then we're talking about this one, By the Fireplace. By the Fireplace. And that's exactly what it smells like, so we don't need to really give a more practical description of it because it smells just like the name indicates, it smells like you're sitting by a fireplace. So you have this roasted kind of chestnut accord in this fragrance. So you get that that kind of chestnut and a kind of almond feel from this fragrance. You have some Peru balsam, you have cashmere, so it gives this kind of a smoky, almost suede-like uh, accord in the heart of the fragrance. And of course you have vanilla, and that's where the main primary sweetness comes from in this fragrance. And again, 
A lot of people know about this fragrance and a lot of people talk about it, in my humble opinion, for good reason. It's definitely a masterfully done designer fragrance. Again, this one is from the House of Replica from Mason Margiela, and this is called By the Fireplace. The next fragrance in the, um, that I would put on a list like this, uh, this one actually comes from the House of Hermes, and this is called Terre de Hermes. Terre de Hermes. And a lot of people talk about um, Prada Long being their favorite office fragrance. I don't argue with that. But for me personally, this is my favorite office fragrance in the entire world. It kind of got that office, it's office safe, but you got that boss-like feel to it. Uh, to me, this is a good fragrance to wear like on an interview. Uh, it just smells like a well put together guy. And I love fragrances that really exude that or that suggest that. Uh, so you have the orange citrusy opening, of course, but then you have this gun flint vetiver thing that kind of gives this earthy. The gun flint gives this kind of dirtiness. That's what people talk about, a dirty kind of citrus fragrance that comes from that gun flint note in here. Phenomenal. Phenomenal, guys. You got to get your nose on it. Easily a masterpiece, in my humble opinion, when you talk about designer fragrances. Again, this is my favorite office fragrance in the entire world. One of my favorites, at least. And... Again, it's been well done and well documented. Uh, so check it out, it's from the House of Hermes. And again, this one is called Terre de Hermes. All right guys, the next fragrance up on the list today that I would categorize as a masterpiece um, is this one from the House of Dolce & Gabbana. And this is the one Eau de Parfum. The one EDP Eau de Parfum. Again, easily one of the best date night fragrances on the market designer or niche when you put your nose to this thing you really you really understand uh, why it would make a list like this it is just so sexy it is so sexy it smells so good and when it came out it was such a unique scent dna you have amber tobacco and orange blossom are the main accords to my nose and again i just love it it's just perfect for for cooler temperatures it's perfect for date nights as a matter of fact, you can really get away with wearing this year round on like a close encounter date night kind of scenario. And it's still to me, designer or niche, one of the best in class. Now I know for a lot of people, they put performance super high up on their list. You know, when you talk about a fragrance like this, to me, it is so good uh, that I don't really knock it for not being the best performer. Because at the end of the day, again, especially for what I feel like this fragrance is most appropriate for a date night, four hours or so, it's set. So check it out. Definitely a masterfully done designer fragrance from the house of Dolce and Gabbana. Again, this one is called One Eau de Parfum. All right, guys. Now, next up on the list, to me, this is where all other powdery designer fragrances have to measure up to. And this one comes from the house of uh, Christian Dior, and this is Dior Homme Intense. Dior Homme Intense. Again, I can't really speak about that new stuff that came out in 2020. Have not smelled it but I will take this one any day. Again, from this fragrance to me kind of spawned that, that iris, that lipsticky, as people refer to it as iris note in fragrances. This is kind of what spawned the interest or the popularity of using the note of iris in fragrances, especially in fragrances that were marketed towards men. There's a lot of fragrances that have kind of imitated this fragrance DNA, if you if you will. And there's some great ones. Valentino Uomo Intense, um, Prada Lome Intense, you know, just to name a few of them top of my head, which to me are two dynamite designer fragrances. And if those fragrances had done this first, then they would be on this list and not this one. But because this one came out first, it's on the list. My God, is this stuff good, man. Um, I recommend if you can get this version of it. Again, I can't really speak for the one that came out in 2020. I'm pretty sure it's similar enough. So, but anyway, I have this one and I cherish it and I love it. From the house of Christian Dior, definitely a masterpiece in my opinion. This is called DHI. That's what it's affectionately known as, but formerly Dior Home Intense. All right, guys, this next fragrance comes from the house of Chanel. And no, I'm not talking about Blue Day Chanel, although that has its place potentially on a list like this as well. But this one kind of started it all, started it all in the Allure Home line, which has some amazing uh, kind of flankers come out from that line of fragrances, but this is where it started. This is a masterpiece, guys, and it doesn't get enough talk. Uh, from the house of Chanel, this is called Allure Home. 
Chanel Allure Ohm. I never forget when I finally brought this fragrance home. It was a little bit earlier uh, in my fragrance collecting uh, journey at least. And my gosh, this to me, uh, I've always said could teach a class on how a fragrance should develop. Bright, beautiful, juicy citrus notes in the opening. You get some lemon, primarily you get a note of peach. Uh, in the opening of this fragrance as well. Then you have some la lavender that kind of calms all that down. Um, the base, you get creamy sandalwood, you get some vanilla, uh, you get some tonka bean, a little bit of coconut. I mean, it's a lot going on sandalwood in here as well, but it is all balanced so well. And you get the, in development, all those different phases. You know, you get that uh, kind of fruity uh, opening, you get the lavender and some rose. Uh, veteran in the heart so you get all that and then you get that nice sweetness on the dry down with the tonka bean vanilla and all that kind of stuff masterpiece masterpiece of a fragrance one again that if there was a class being taught on how a fragrance should develop from opening mid to close this has to be the professor so check it out guys uh, from the house of chanel again this is an amazing fragrance one of my favorites this is chanel Allure on. All right, guys, the next fragrance on the list comes from the house of Giorgio Armani, and this is Aqua Digio Pro Fumo. Aqua Digio Pro Fumo. And man, this stuff is so, so good, so good, so good. This is my second or third bottle of this because I can all, always know that I can grab this and spray it on, and I'm going to smell great no matter what I'm doing or no matter where I am going. It's that kind of fragrance. And of course, this uh, piggyback off of the uh, original Aqua Digio, which was released in 1996, which is a masterpiece in its own, which I've talked about before, but this deserves praise as well. To me, and this is hard to say, and this is saying something because the original was so good, I honestly feel like they made the original even better. They added incense, they added patchouli here, so you get this little smoky earthiness on uh, with this fragrance uh, that you did not have with the original but you still have all the things that made the original great in here as well. Perfect flanker to me. Uh, you took the original, which was hard to do, and made it even better. And that's what they accomplished with this fragrance. So check it out. Pretty sure you guys have had it or heard about it, of course, by now, but it is a masterpiece of a fragrance to me. Again, this is called Aqua Digio Profumo. All right, guys, the next fragrance up on the list that is easily a masterpiece, I think, in most people's minds uh, for what it is and what it has been to the uh, fragrance community as a whole. This fragrance was done in the year 1995 by a, one of my favorite master perfumers is uh, amazing Francis Kirkjohn. And this one is called Lamel. Lamel, Lamel, Lamel. Um, this fragrance probably got a lot of people interested in fragrances. You probably had it. You probably had a, a relative that probably had it back in the day. I myself has had, have had many bottles of this stuff throughout the course of my lifetime, and this one is really low now. It's all the way down to here. Uh, this is one I'm gonna always keep in my collection because it's such a uh, such an iconic fragrance to me uh, when you think about fragrances overall. Uh, when it was released in 1995, how many fragrances have kind of piggybacked off of this DNA? And at its core, it's a mint a lavender fragrance with some sweetness on a dry down, tonka bean, sandalwood, so you get this freshness in here from the lavender, of course. You get the fresh, uh, the freshness to me is enhanced with that mint. The lavenders, again, sandalwood. This is an amazing fragrance. Um, like I said, there's been so many fragrances that have kind of mimicked this DNA. And there have been a lot of Lamel flankers. I mean, there's probably about 40 of them <laughs> out there. But this is where it all started. So definitely a masterpiece to me. And you guys, of course, I'm pretty sure you've heard about this one, but... It's one that I think everybody should always have at least a bottle that's in their collection. From the house of, of course, Jean-Paul Gaultier, this is called Le Mail. All right, guys, and another fragrance that easily to me is a masterpiece. This is my favorite designer fragrance of all time. And it comes from the house of Mugler. You guys heard me rave about this a lot. This is Pure Havan. Pure Havan. I have a backup bottle of it. I think I'll probably be good to go for life with this. I may get one more backup bottle just to make sure, just to make sure uh, that I'll always have this around, but easily one of my, uh, easily my favorite designer fragrance of all time. It's so nostalgic. Uh, it smells great. 
Um, I love everything about it. The, the bottle, uh, where it reminds me of as far as my fragrance journey. Again, everything about this fragrance I love and adore. It has tobacco in it. It has honey. Uh, there is um, patchouli in this, a little bit of amber in this as well. What's, what's not to like about it? And again, I always talk about that vibe of cherry. It's a vibe. They don't list cherry as a note, but it definitely kind of gives off uh, that vibe. My favorite designer fragrance of all time. It performs great. It smells great. It's great. From the house of Mugler. Again, this is called Pure. Bye-bye. All right, guys. And last but not least on this list of uh, masterpiece designer fragrances, uh, in my humble opinion, this one comes from the house of Tom Ford, and this is Black Orchid. Black Orchid, and this is the EDT, the Eau de Toilette Concentration. Hmm. And you can get the EDT, the EDP to me, it does not matter. Both of them are masterfully done. Uh, you get some truffle in here. You get some patchouli in here. Uh, of course, tuberose is the primary uh, floral note, although there's a lot in here. There's yang-a-lang, uh, but the yang-a-lang tuberose, more so the tuberose to my nose. And then on the dry down, you get some vanilla, some sandalwood, a masterpiece of a designer fragrance. Now, I got the EDT because when I first got into this and I was looking at this fragrance, the EDP was a little bit too strong for me. But now I think I need a bottle of the EDP as well because it's just an amped up version of the EDT. But again, this was originally marketed towards women when it was first released. It is definitely a unisex fragrance, but the way this has you know, transcend genders and the whole nine. It's an amazing fragrance. Trust me on that. One of my favorites and it's definitely a masterpiece in my opinion. It's from the house of Tom Ford. You guys should check it out. This one's called Black Orchid. But that's it guys, that's my time. I hope you guys enjoyed this list today as I gave you 10 designer fragrances in my collection that I consider to be a masterpiece. As always, I sincerely appreciate your time and attention to these videos. I know you guys don't have to watch, but you do, and I sincerely appreciate that. And don't forget to take a few moments to go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, and make sure you are sharing these videos out to some other folks out there that you think could use this information or find it entertaining. Because I'm your guy, Darian. I'm the Bowtie Fragrance Guy. I love to look good, and of course, I love to smell amazing. So until next time, guys, keep looking good, keep smelling even better. I'll catch you on the flip side.